hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous video we discussed some basic concepts about uh, time shifting uh, in the continuous time domain uh, signal okay for continuous time domain signals and we discussed how shifting happens in both directions and the whole process and mechanism of that in this video we are going to discuss about the same shifting operation but for discrete time domain signal okay so we will take the same signal that uh, we considered in the uh, first video and we will discuss how the shifting will take place in the discrete time domain uh, format so this is the continuous time domain signal now we know that a continuous time domain signal can be converted into discrete time through the process of sampling and quantization I have already posted a video related to that you can check out that this gets us the discrete time signal this is in the continuous time domain T here it is in the discrete time domain N so if we take samples of these signals at distinct equidistant points okay at equidistant points let's say we take samples at 1 and 2 okay at these two points then the discrete time domain signal will be something like this okay so this is the discrete time domain signal okay this is n this is xn now we have to perform the shifting operation on this discrete time domain signal so in the continuous time domain the shifting took place in this way x t minus t or x t plus t here the shifting will take place in x x n minus k or x n plus k ok so we will discuss the shifting of a discrete time domain signal so here we have is the discrete time signal with the values at x equals to 0 in the n equals to 0 the value of the signal is 2 at n equals to 1 the value of the signal is 2 and n equals to 2 it is 2 and everywhere else it is 0 okay so let us perform the shifting x n minus 2 ok so in the similar way that we did in the continuous time domain we will create a new signal y n and equate it with this shifted signal x n minus 2 now we will determine the values of y at distinct and different equidistant values of n so first y 0 b x 0 minus 2 b x minus 2 x minus 2 is 0 because there is nothing no value of x n at n equals to minus 2 only at 0 1 and 2 so this is 0 y 1 equals to x 1 minus 2 equal to x 
minus 1 which is equal to 0 at x minus 1 is also equal to 0 at y 2 at n equals to 2 it is x 2 minus 2 which is equal to x 0 which is equal to 2 x 0 equals to 2 similarly y 3 at n equals to 3 is x 3 minus 2 we substitute n with 3 becomes x 1 which is equal to 2 at n equals to 4 is x 4 minus 2 is equal to x 2 here x 2 is equal to 2 ok now if we do y 5 x 5 minus 2 is equal to x 3 which is equal to 0 because at 3 also the value is 0 3 4 and so on so if we go forward all the values will be 0 so the important points for us is this y2 y3 and y4 these are the values at which the values of the signal yn are 2 so now let us draw the shifted signal so these are the values at which the signal exists at n equals to 2 3 and 4 with values 2 at all points so now let us draw this shifted discrete time signal okay so this is y n is equal to x n minus 2 0 1 2 3 4 okay so y2 is equal to 2 so here y3 is equal to 2 and y4 is also equal to 2 so this is the shifted signal x n minus 2 this is x n discrete time signal the reference signal and this is the shifted discrete time signal so here if you compare these two signals x n and x n minus 2 you will find that here this signal okay x n here has shifted by two units to the right here the signal started from 0 1 2 here the signal starts from 2 3 and 4 so here this signal xn here has shifted by two units to the right so the same thing as in continuous time domain signal but here we are taking it at distinct points equidistant distinct points similarly if we uh, perform the other shifting xn plus 2 here then the signal will shift by two units to the left here it has shifted by two units to the right then in xn plus 2 it will shift by two units to the left okay let's see that okay so let us here perform the other shifting which is x n plus 2 so here again we will create a new signal y n is equal to x n plus 2 now we have to determine the values of y n at different values of n in relation with x n plus 2 which correlates it with the original reference signal ok so at n equals to 0 y 0 is equal to x we will substitute n with 0 which is x 0 plus 2 is equal to x 2 x 2 is equal to 2 so at y 0 the value is 2 similarly at 
y1 px1 plus 2 equal to x3 which is equal to at 3 here the signal value is 0 so it will be 0 now we do not have to go any point further because anything more than 1 it will be 0 also so let us go in the negative direction so y minus 1 it will be x minus 1 plus 2 which is equal to x1 which is equal to 2 x1 is equal to 2 y minus 2 is equal to x minus 2 plus 2 which is equal to x0 which is also equal to 2 ok y ok let us go negative direction further y minus 3 will be x minus 3 plus 2 which is equal to x minus 1 there is nothing in minus 1 so it will be 0 ok so we have got the three points this this and this y0 y minus 1 and y minus 2 so now let us draw the shifted signal ok so we got these values for this shifting x n plus 2 so let us draw the shifted signal so for that we will draw the time axis first n then y n equal to x n plus 2 k 0 minus 1 minus ok so again the signal has shifted by 2 units so here it will be this this but y minus 1 and then y minus 2 this so this is the shifted signal x n plus 2 so the signal again has shifted by 2 units to the left 2 units to the left the original signal the reference signal x n has shifted by 2 units to the left and we got this signal x n plus 2 ok so we got x n minus 2 and x n plus 2 so to conclude the whole discussion the shifting in the discrete time domain this is the original signal the reference signal x n along the discrete time axis n here this is the shifting x n minus now if you compare this signal with this the original signal or the reference signal has shifted by 2 units to the right ok 2 units to the right so here the minus sign means shifting to the right shifting of the signal to the right whenever minus sign comes you must directly know that the shifting will take place to the right but by how many units this is this is controlled by this factor here 2 so generally if you find something like this x n minus k it means shifting will take place by k units to the right ok now this signal reference signal original and x n plus 2 so here if you compare this signal and this the original signal has shifted by 2 units to the left 2 units to the left 
okay so whenever plus sign comes it means shifting will take place to the left so if something like this comes of x n plus k it means the shifting will take place by k units to the left okay so now from now on if you find a signal with a shifted operation you can directly shift it by right to the right or to the left depending on the sign the notation and this factor k but first i would recommend you that when you start you go by the usual approach that is you equate it with y create a new signal and then determine the values of y at different points but after that when you practice more and more you follow this shortcut approach okay so this is the shifting in the discrete time we did it in both ways so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much